Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy Black Camel once again before we get started like always. Like this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and go ahead and leave a comment down below saying what's up. I would greatly appreciate it. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see it on this small screen here, but I am now officially making the best Magic the Gathering merch there is out there. I guarantee it, you ain't gonna find nothing like it. It's like it's probably some better stuff out there, but that's beyond the point. If you want to know in some future videos, I'm going to be putting out how you can obtain one of these shirts and win a free box of the new Strick Haven booster box that's coming out pretty shortly. And even the Kaldheim box that I still do have not open. If you want to be one of those people who can win that, make sure you stay tuned for future videos learning how you can do so. All right, further ado, let's go ahead and get into the top. 20 cards in my opinion to watch out for let's go all right so streak haven is coming out in a couple of days depending on when you're watching this if you watch this a week from now then it's almost kind of not irrelevant but you know you already done seen all the cards or whatever but in my opinion there's always cards to look out for and sometimes those are the cards that's going to change standard sometimes for the better or for the worse and sometimes there's cards that are just exciting to play but it's not going to do too much damage you know to the tier one tier two decks so these are my opinion the cards that's going to put its its little footprints you know some some cars little footprints some cars is gonna be just about you know the standard staple of building around so um if you watch my last one when Kaldheim came out i was kind of right with some cars so let's see if we can uh be that correct again so first card here is confront the past it's a uh, x black sorcery lesson which is, is going to be interesting on his own to see how that works out um but you can choose one and the first mode is return target planeswalker card uh, with mana value x or less from your graveyard to the battlefield or remove twice x loyalty counters from target planeswalker and opponent control so there's going to be a lot of planeswalkers especially testing out um like with Kaldheim, there was a couple that nobody really played. So it might be that kind of same situation with the new Liliana or um, the new Wolf guy. I, I forget his name at the moment. Um, it's, it's fun to play, but I'm not really sure. But there's still, obviously, a lot of good Chandra's, um, uh, Ugin's out there. So with this one here, I think just being being able to use that first mode to bring a planeswalker from the graveyard to the battlefield is going to be good especially if if it's a jace uh, to to draw cards or whatever but that right there i think is going to be interesting so and it's a lesson card so it doesn't really take up space in your main 60 is which why i like it because you can just keep this in your i think they said like seven six cards that you can have in your 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 sideboard for best of one player so if you had to choose one this one to me in my opinion will definitely work out and it doesn't take up space that's the that's the beautiful part all right then we have devastating mas mastery <laughs> it's a two for it cost six which isn't bad for this ability it says you may pay four rather than pay this spell's mana cost. If the four cost was paid, an opponent chooses up to two non-permanent state control and return them to their owner's hand. Or if you do pay the whole six, destroy all non-land permanents. Now, the reason why I like this card, one, it gives you options. So if you need to nuke the board in a sense <laughs> by turn four, cool. Your opponent does return to their hand, which is better than your opponent keeping two permanents on the field and then everything else blowing up because sometimes they you know they're gonna choose their best cards but if it has to be returned to their hand if it's a creature with 20 plus one counters guess what they lose those counters and it's just a fresh new creature so sometimes that could work in your benefit or getting to six mana isn't as hard as some of the other 
destroy all nine land permanents. Sometimes it costs like eight, nine mana. So this one right here, I think is gonna be essential for control players. And you can actually see this in historic. You know what I'm saying? You blow up all nine land permanents. So unless it's indestructible, your opponent's kind of screwed after that. So I think this one right here is definitely going to see some play. Then we have Awake the Blood Avatar. On the flip side, we don't have in order here. So once we get to that, I will bring that up. But the flip side is actually a card that I'm really more interested in. But the other side is not too bad either. It costs eight and it says as an addition cost to cast a spell, you may sacrifice any number of creatures. This spell costs two less to cast for each creature sacrifice this way. So sacrifice three, this only costs you two. And it says each opponent sacrifices a creature. So that right there kind of will even out the board, hopefully a little bit. And it says create a three, six black and red avatar creature token with haste, which is key. So it does something when you actually play it. And it says whenever this creature attacks, it deals three damage to each opponent. So if you're playing against two, three other people, guess what? Everybody getting some love <laughs> with this card here. So I like this because it has haste and it's a three six it is not a push around creature unless your opponent can you know claim the firstborn then you're kind of screwed but other than that i think it's really good value but the other side of this is what i'm really excited for then we got hofri hofri maybe ghost forge now this one right here is my personal favorite if you're in my discord or in my small circle of friends um this one right here, I'm really excited for. It's a legendary dwarf cleric, which is key. If you see my cleric uh, tribal, psh, bro, game over, game over. It's a five drop, so it definitely uh, helps with my curve. And it's a four or five, spirits you control, get plus one, plus one, and have trample and haste. So it actually boosts up something. And it says whenever a non- token creature you control dies exile it if you do create a token that's a copy of that creature except it's a spirit in addition to its other types which is important and it has when this creature leaves the battlefield return the exile card to your graveyard so i don't want to give all the jewels and diamonds that i have planned for this but be sure cleric and spirit is definitely gonna have some synergetic love together, if that's a thing, <laughs> in a future build that I have. But this one right here, I think, just if you wanna build a spirits deck in historic, this one right here allows you to do that. And it actually, plus one, plus one, trample and haste. So it actually gives you the incentive to go ahead and do that. So I think this one right here is gonna be pretty important. Then we got Myla, Crafty Companion. Mila, Myla, Mila, whatever you choose. It's a three drop, double white, legendary creature. Two, three, and it says, whenever an opponent attacks one or more Planeswalker you control, put a loyalty counter on each plane, Planeswalker you control. So once again, like I said, if you're playing with some Planeswalkers, this will give you the incentive to do that. And it says, whenever a permanent you control becomes the target of a spell or ability and opponent controls you draw a card so you get value for when your opponent tries to blow up something or remove exile you get to draw a card so you, i mean you can't really say no to that it is a mythic so i mean it's a planeswalker on the other side so i get it but if it was just a creature that would be pretty good on its own then we got double major this one right here i mean it's it's a rare it's to me it's not good on its own obviously but i'm pretty sure somebody's gonna find a way to break this um there is the four drop creature where when you target one of your creatures with a sorcerer instant make a copy of that creature this one right here is going to be fun to play not like some tier one but is going to be a way to kind of make your opponent quit somehow some way I'm definitely gonna try it myself, but this one right here, I think is gonna be a really fun card to play with, especially if you wanna, 
do some ridiculous copies and make a thousand copies of this yeah it's gonna be fun no matter what so yeah it's, it's definitely in my top 20. then we got spell statue it's a two drop artifact with magecraft and it says whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell put a book counter on spell stature statue <laughs> You can go ahead and tap, which is free, which is, I like that. Um, remove a book counter from spell and add in a colorless spell, which helps because you don't have to build a certain color around this because it's colorless. Or you can go ahead, pay three, tap, remove three book counters from this and draw a card. So this one already, like I said, is going to be really into control builds. Um, they already have that other two mana you know where you can tap scry and but this one right here i think is going to be a nice you know other card if you don't like that one or if you want to put all four of them in hey this will give you uh mana and draw ability so i think it's going to be used for sure then we got teaching of the archaeus <laughs> something like that's so a three drop sorcery lesson once again you can put this in your sideboard so it doesn't take up the full 60 and it says if an opponent has more cards in hand than you draw two cards draw three cards instead if an opponent has at least four or more cards in hand than you so once again if you're playing some sort of aggro-ish mid-range and you run out of cards you play a card that has learn pull this from the sideboard and guess what now you get to draw hopefully three cards and it only costs you three so i mean it costs you three you draw three cards i think that's pretty fair so once again i love this card because it's a lesson and it doesn't take up 60 um your 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 main 60. that's the reason why i like it all right then we got Jay-Z, Jadzi, Oracle of wherever she's from. It's an eight drop, which is going to be um, exciting to get that out. But the flip side may allow you to get there a little bit quicker. But it's a legendary five five and it says discard a card, return this creature to its owner's hand. So if you don't have to worry about your opponent stealing it, but it does allow you to protect it pretty good because you can return it back to your hand. And it does have magecraft and it says whenever you cast or copy an instant sorcery spell reveal the top card of your library if it's a non-land card you may cast it by paying one by paying one rather than paying its mana cost if it's a land you don't put it at the bottom of your library you don't put it into your graveyard you put it onto the battlefield why that's to me that's crazy it even the land doesn't even come in tapped you just put on a battlefield ready to use it and this costs eight so i'm assuming you can play some sort of ultimatum or if it's on the top of your library because you scribed correctly go ahead and pay one for that ultimatum <laughs> boom mind blown i don't know how i'm gonna build it i need to kind of see the cards around it but i'm pretty sure somebody has already figured out <laughs> a way to break this card. All right, next one. Then we got Mavinda, Student's Advocate. It's a three drop legendary creature, two, three, and it has flying, so I, I guess you wanna have a flyer, but you can pay zero. You may cast target instant or sorcery uh, card from your graveyard this turn. If that spell doesn't target a creature you control, it costs eight or more to cast it this way. If that spell would be put into your graveyard, exile it instead. Activate only once each turn. So, like I said, there's a lot of good synergies out there that will target your own creatures. And this one right here will allow you to do it for zero, for free. That's beautiful. So to me, this one right here may not be like a tier one, you know, destroyer of all cards, but if it's put in the right build, it will be extremely fun to play and you will win some games, which that's what I like to do. All right, let's go to the next one here. Then we have Luca, that's his name. He's the other side of that fox that we've seen. 
pretty interesting to me. It's a six drop planes walker, which to me, when it's a six drop, it's pretty decent. So it comes in with five loyalty and it's plus one says you may discard a card. If you do draw a card, if a creature card was discarded this way, draw two cards instead. So that tells you you need to be a little bit creature heavy so you can actually, you know, take advantage of drawing two cards. Or you can minus two and it says return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste. Exile it at the beginning of your next upkeep. So you can boom plop it on the battlefield as a defender if you really need to your opponent can't interact with it and at the beginning of your upkeep boom go ahead exile it so it kind of protects itself in a sense so minus seven i like this one you get an emblem with whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control it deals damage equal to its power to any target so you get an emblem pretty much of terror of the peaks and any creature you put on a battlefield is doing damage to any target i don't need to say more this card is going to be amazing maybe it won't see play because it does cost six so a lot of people really don't have you know time to be playing six mana because they just want to win fast so it may not see a lot of play but i trust me your boy black hammer is gonna make this work all right, now we got Journey to the Oracles, the other side of the the Broken Wizard that costs eight. <laughs> um, it's a sorcery speed, it costs four, and it says, you may put any number of land cards from your hand onto the battlefield. Wow, that, that text alone is just like, really? Really? Turn four, you might have two lands. If you're running like, you know, like a um, 28, 29 lands, you might have three by turn four, but you get put, put all that on the battlefield. Then if you control eight or more lands, you may discard a card. If you do return journey to the Oracle to his owner's hand. So you get to use the creature half, which is ridiculous. So yeah, <laughs> then we got uh, ecological appreciation. It's an X plus three sorcery mythic card. So I don't know if it's worth cat, uh, um, you know, formulating, making, but we'll see. It says search your library and graveyard for up to four creature cards with different names that each have mana value X or less then and reveal them. So if you want to do like a questing beast or lower, that's what four, five, six, seven. If you're using green, obviously, and you do a little ramping, you, you might be able to, you know, make that happen pretty soon. So it says an opponent chooses two of those cards. Shuffle the chosen cards into your library. So if you choose um, uh, creatures out of your graveyard and your opponent chooses those two, you get to put them back into your library. So that that's a little plus right there and put the rest onto the battlefield. So your opponent has to choose what creatures they have to deal with. Hopefully you choose some indestructible creatures or some creatures with hex proof or haste, you know what I'm saying? So if this is put into the right build, it will definitely change the course of the game for you. But nine, nine, this may not be used a whole bunch, but once again, if it's put into the right build, it could be fun and win you some games. Then we got uh, Augmenter, Augmenter, uh, Pugilist, <laughs> I don't know. It's a three drop troll and it has trample and it's three three, pretty good. And it says, as long as you control eight or more lands, this dude gets plus five, plus five. That's, that's eight, eight with trample. If it had haste, it'd be way too good, but the other side, I'm not too sure. It's it's a, it's it's all right, but this one right here is good for a three three. You know, it's three three for three, pretty decent. But if you get this in a late game, bro, you're gonna have an eight eight win trample. So, I mean, that's that's pretty good. <laughs> then we got Efrit Flame Painter. So four drop one four, double strike, and it says whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player 
you may cast target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard without paying his mana cost <laughs> bro if that spell will be put into the graveyard exile instead so if you're playing your cards right you discard you know uh, with uh, you know the two drop where you draw two cards you discard a card attack with this you can literally cast an ultimatum by turn five maybe turn four if you really really push it but at least by turn five you're paying you're you're not even paying you're using for free an ultimatum and still have five lands to mess with do i do i need to say any more about that this card should change how standard is played now of course you're gonna have a lot of winning people out there that's like nah you know it, it, it doesn't it doesn't like nah like make this card work it will it will be awesome <laughs> all right then we got dagmoth dagum yeah titan we're just gonna call him the the titan okay so four drop uh dual black green land so you could be mono black mono green and it says whenever and it's 11 10 i mean if you don't see that stat right there it's 11 10 so this it's it's a big deal okay this says whenever this dude attacks or blocks sacrifice the creature so i've been hearing a lot of people say you know use a lot of the uh the pest that's gonna be a lot of tokens go ahead do that this one right here it needs trample so if you have a way to throw trample on it you don't care what you sacrifice because you're gonna have 11 10 with trample so can, can we make this happen we're gonna have to now this is the other side um that i was referring to with the whole demon you know three six uh ex extus extus overlord i'm not gonna even yeah it's a four drop two four double strike which is cool and it says whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell return target non-legendary creature from the graveyard to your hand now as you see this one right here i love reanimation decks that really have something that and, and all you got to do is cast an instant or sorcery spell and guess what Boop, right back into your hand so on the other side of this you sacrifice two three creatures guess what play the creature side Boop, get, get that back into your hand bro that's nonsense to me i'm gonna make this work and it's gonna it's gonna be fun i, I got a couple of ideas for it then we got dina soul steeper is black green legendary creature one three and it says whenever you gain life each opponent loses one life you can go ahead pay one sacrifice another creature this creature right here gets <coughs> plus x until end of turn yada 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 the only reason why i had this card is because it's everybody's favorite color combination yes you don't have to stick with the school name but gal galagory whatever the green black is everyone seems to be gravitating to those colors because i think they're interested with the gang life your opponent loses life which in standard already there's a million and one ways to gain life especially with the pests when they die you're i think you gain life i don't think your opponent loses life but you gain life but if there's a whole bunch of cards like this where if you gain life your opponent loses life so i think that's going to be mainly what people are going to be playing as standard for at least a week or two until they kind of get that out of their system and they realize it's you know it's fun to play but it's not going to be like a tier one deck you know so definitely watch out for that combination then ooh, that was a loud pop um then we have echoing uh e equation and it's a five drop sorcery speed and i'm trying to remember oh yeah that's the three three for three creature and it says choose target creature you control each other creature you control becomes a copy of it until end of turn that's actually not bad i'm getting a call here let me stop that um becomes a copy of it until end of turn except those creatures aren't legendary 
if the chosen card creature is legendary so ah, ah okay now now i'm having a change of heart it could work once again you, you you already know what i'm gonna say it's gonna be really fun to play is this gonna change like standard on its own probably not but if you play it right if you have you know uh, a whole bunch of token creatures and you have one questing beast or one uh elder gagaroth out there all your tokens and everything become uh uh questing beasts <laughs> Tra trample haste death touch four four uh vigilance <laughs> like that's going to be ridiculous so i, I think it's going to be pretty good then we got Professor's Warning. It's a one drop instant speed for black. And you choose one. Put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. Or target creature gains indestructible until end of turn. Now you're probably like, hey, Mr. Hammer, this is an uncommon. It's it's a one drop instant speed. Why, why is this in the top 20? Because cards like this is going to allow you to build off when you're triggering all your, ma your mage crafts. This one right here costs one to give a creature indestructible and you got to take care of your creatures and this will allow you to start triggering everything and then you can copy it and then trigger more. It's cards like this that's instant speed that costs one. Any Everybody can keep that one mana up to go ahead and trigger everything. So I just appreciate them making instant speed that actually can do something on a battlefield and it costs one that's amazing and that's it speaking of amazing that is it hopefully this wasn't a long video i got this ad in the way 27 minutes that's not bad once again if you guys have any cards that i missed or or cards that you think is going to be pretty amazing go ahead and leave in the comments down below i will see you guys in the next video it's your boy black hammer peace Thank <laughs> you.